closer. It's getting closer. How do you dress for the summer and not look like a complete f***ing moron? I'm gonna tell you how in this video. Welcome, I'm Carl Murawski, and this is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Wool, leather, and denim are great in the colder months, but what about when the temperatures start to rise? Believe me when I tell you, you don't have to go full Connecticut Connor or sloppy dad style with big baggy cargo shorts and some sort of graphic tee. By the way, I'm aware that I am wearing a graphic tee right now, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You can keep that rugged yet refined look throughout the year by making a few simple tweaks. Now the best way to do that is to take a look at the style in general and kind of figure out where it starts from, right? It is a style that's rooted in workwear and one which relies much more on textures rather than patterns. So all we're really gonna do is take that fall and winter wardrobe and switch it from dark mode to light mode. Dark indigo and it becomes lighter blue. Footwear, yeah, we're gonna get to footwear. Now let's start with shirts. One of my favorite materials is chambray, but even the lightest of chambray could be a little bit heavy on the hot days. So the perfect alternative to that is linen. Now, linen is a, it's made from the flax plant, but this stuff is renowned for its breathability. It also has this really cool, interesting texture. There are, however, a few drawbacks to linen. Most of the time, it doesn't stretch at all. So it's oversized. Matter of fact, if you look at this American giant linen shirt that I, I actually did a review on it last year, it's oversized to allow you to move. They're also really damn expensive. The third thing is that linen tends to wrinkle. And this is kind of part of the like nonchalant charm of the fabric, but overall, a lot of people just don't like it. And unless you really know what it is, it just kind of looks like somebody has a wrinkled shirt on. But actually, that's I'm really excited to show you this one here. This is by a company called Wills, and it came out, this is a wrinkle resistant linen shirt. Now it actually is a blend, but as you can see right here, it has that same kind of texture as chambray, right? So it's almost like a lightweight denim, but it's super duper breathable. Now, I mean, I think that they have this in short sleeve versions like that American Giant one that I showed you. Personally though, I've always liked long sleeve shirts and then rolling the sleeves up. I just think it's a cooler look. It also makes the product a little bit more versatile. So this comes in a number of different colors and like chambray, typically linen is only, you're gonna find it in whites, creams, light blue like this. Some other options out there include Filson's Feather Cloth, which is a mere three ounces. And I really wanna get one of these myself because it's basically like wearing tissue paper, I would imagine. Three ounces is like nothing. But if you do decide to wear patterns, well then your options open up substantially. As a matter of fact, I really like this camp shirt. This is from Filson. Um, I, I, I just dig this pattern, this kind of red, white, and blue patriotic pattern right here. I mean, something like Memorial Day, um, this fits right in. It's a little bit more substantial. It is sort of oversized, so if you get one, this is large, and on me, this, the shoulders kind of hold, they hang over a little bit more. Actually, I think I might try to shrink a little bit because I believe that medium might be a little bit too small, but either way, if you wanna get one of these, be sure to size down. Another fabric that's kind of rare, but totally worth seeking out is gauze fabric. Now, a lot of times this is just basically a very open weave fabric and the wind basically blows right through it. So there are different options out there. Actually, I've only really seen it in a couple of different colors, but I really, really like this stuff. And it has that sort of textured, rugged look to it as well. You can get kind of weird with it too if you wanna go ahead and get a terry cloth shirt. I know that OAS and I believe Real McCoy's makes one. Now these are sort of a combination between a shirt and a beach towel. And I think they work best like poolside. I definitely get some Paul Newman vibes from these. Now to me, they are just not my style. I'll never get one of these. They, they, sure, they're a little bit Paul Newman, but they also give me some serious, creepy old man vibes. I spent a lot of time as a kid in a really shady public pool, so I've kind of seen some things that can't be unseen. And of course, we have the classic t-shirt. Now, after my big white t-shirt shootout last year, I found that I ended up really gravitating towards the American Giant and the Free Note cloth tees because they seem to be the least finicky and learning you know, what I actually wear and what I don't is very eye-opening. I just wanna wear it and wash it and repeat. All right, let's talk about pants and shorts. Now, honestly, I don't really like shorts all that much, although I have to admit that they have their place. There are certain temperatures where you're just not gonna wanna wear pants. I get it. And there's some guys who like shorts. And there are plenty of cool options to be had. Triple Lot Design, Carhartt, Filson, uh, Flint and Tinder, 
And Filson just came out with probably the most rugged looking swim trunks that I've ever seen. So I guess even swimwear can look rugged. Personally, I'll take a good lightweight pair of pants any day, like these that I'm actually wearing right now. This is the Naked and Famous Fox Fiber that I did a review of last year. I've been wearing these pretty much ever since. They are my go-to lightweight option. You can find denim in all different weights and colors. Now, I know that these things work well in the summer because I wore them to Florida, and I also wore them last year to Texas, where I got to hang out with Jeremy Sires and Taylor Martin. Whoa, hang on a second. Let me just pick up that name that I dropped. But my big score this year is actually this pair of Kato brand pants. This is a 10 and a half ounce selvage denim. A lot of their stuff is made in the USA, including these right here, but they're also available in a bunch of different cuts. These are straight cut because I still wear my boots in the summer. These actually start their life as beige, right? And then they just get washed like crazy and end up in this sort of natural acru kind of color. These have some four-way stretch, which is very, very nice. So that means that it stretches this way and it stretches this way. More or less, they move with you. They have a really cool blue selvage ID, which is kind of neat with that natural color. You know, now, so here's the thing. Stretch has come a long way. Back in the day, you used to stretch it out and it would never really return back to normal over time. So you'd get the bagged out knees and all kinds of stuff. And there are definitely denim purists who believe that no denim should stretch. But regardless, you should still try to wear a lighter weight, lighter colored denim if that's what you choose to do. But honest to God, you should try stretch denim. Or don't. I don't care. I'm not your father. I mean, unless I am, in which case, uh, hello, son. Do we have to talk about footwear? Is it time? Okay. All right. Well, let's get this over with. Now, I'm so hesitant to talk about footwear because I, I, I really, there's a lot of footwear that I don't like that has to uh, do with the summertime. And honestly, you know, flip flops and sneakers, they have their place. That being by the beach or the pool or at the gym, respectively. Although there are some sneakers that look pretty decent. I mean, Chuck Taylor's, Moonstar, uh, Shoes Like Pottery. There are a few out there that actually do look pretty good. For, for the most part, though, I just definitely try to steer away from any of those, like, fluorescent, overly complicated with like pistons and rack and pinion steering, stuff like that. Personally, I try to go with an unlined leather boot, something that's a little bit lower. And so if you're wearing six or eight or 10 inch boots during the winter and fall, well, maybe you can find something that's a little bit lower, like a five inch. Matter of fact, the Jim Green Valleys, the uh, African Ranger are really good for this or a nice Chukka. I think those just are dynamite over any other type of footwear. I know boat shoes are also popular, but I, don't own a boat, so I don't have any boat shoes. Actually, no, I do own a boat. It, there's a sailboat that's in the woods behind my house. So, I mean, I guess that counts. Maybe I could wear some boat shoes. Camp mocks are also an option, but you know, like, let's be honest here. If you take away that shoelace around there, they're basically masquerading. That's all they're doing because they are loafers with a shoelace, which I guess technically doesn't make them loafers, but they're, they're really treading on thin ice. All right, so speaking of loafers, let's go ahead and talk about loafers. Now, I don't know who these guys who are out there wearing loafers with no socks. Who decided that we need to see more of men's ankles? We don't, okay? You know, walking around in loafers with no socks, your gross, sweaty feet inside of these things right here. Who is behind this? Who decided that we need to see more of that? I suspect it's Jared Leto. And I can see the comments now, but Carl, I like to wear my loafers. They're like light little slipper shoes that I could put on and listen to 30 Seconds to Mars. Well, go ahead. We're all entitled to our own opinion. Yours just happens to be wrong. All right, moving on, moving on. I'm over it, I'm over it. So suede is actually a really good material. You know, I'm not over it. I'm. So, you know, when you put on loafers for the day, this is what you're telling the world. You're saying to the world, you know, I'm not gonna do anything physical today. I'm not gonna work out. I'm not gonna actually do any physical work. They're the footwear of an asshole. That's who these are for. They're for the guy who's gonna put these on, park his BMW in the handicapped spot, go inside, yell at a waitress. That's who loafers are for. And I know you're behind this, Jared Leto. I know it. Anyway, so suede can be a great option as well. Suede has a lighter look, it's usually thinner material, and they're often available in lighter colors. Okay, we're done with footwear. And we have to talk about hats. Skin care is no joke, okay? And as my hair has started to migrate south, never to return, it's become a really big issue. Covering your head, melanoma and stuff like that, you don't wanna deal with that when you get older. So let me just go ahead and put these weapons away. Uh, you, you definitely don't wanna deal with that. When I'm dressed up, 
I have a great Panama hat that I wear. I got it from Optimo Hats. Otherwise, oftentimes I'm just wearing a ball cap. I have also heard really good things about the sort of flat cap or newsboy cap in linen. I don't have any of those yet, but I'm looking to add one to my collection. Sunglasses haven't changed very much in the last 50 years, and you can go ahead and check out a video that I did about those right here. I covered American Optical, Randolph Engineering, Ray-Ban, and actually where Ray-Ban started. And the cool thing about these is that they're basically timeless. If you have a great pair of aviators or great pair of wayfarers or club masters from back in the 80s, they still look dynamite today. So go ahead and check that out, and I'll catch you over there.